The thoroughbred is a magnificent animal, bred for speed, bred to compete, the sport of kings. Well, West Coast has it by a six. It's the all new Let's Go Racing from Parks Casino and Racetrack. It's action packed and fun for the entire family. Three of them are right together with one furlong to go. Let's Go Racing is brought to you by the Pennsylvania Thoroughbred Horsemen's Association. It's fun to see them run. Welcome to Let's Go Racing. I'm Danny Gibson here with Dick Girardi, and we're coming to you from Parks Racing. On today's show, we're going to see some superstars on the track in the Dwyer, the John Narood at Belmont, and the Stephen Foster at Churchill. So, Dick, what does Charge It, Olympiad, and Life is Good have in common? Yeah, Danny, I think you can make a really <laughs> strong case. The three best non flight line performances of 2022. I don't know that we've ever had this in the history of the buyer figures, but we had three horses on the same day run buyer figures of 110 or more. It was an awesome couple of hours watching those horses win those races. I think you just came up with a word for the Urban Dictionary, <laughs> non-flight line. Non-flight line. I That's, love it. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, before we get to that, let's get to some parks racing. We were here to celebrate the 4th of July right here at Parks Racing. Let's take a look at the ninth race from Monday. It was an allowance optional claiming race for the 35,000 tag. Purse is 47,000. They're going to go one mile. And our post time favorite is the number three, who's in for the 35,000 tag, Flashy and Dynamite, now with new trainer Jamie Ness. Right, claim for 35,000 off of Michael Moore, and we'll bring his name up in a second. Uh, went back on the 6th of June, and shockingly, of a big favorite, Jamie Ness. Ruben Silvera, six to five, which is going to seem like a pretty good price when this thing's over. And John Service takes our second choice uh, with the Midnight Obsession, a PA bred for mainline racing stables. Dr. Bucky was here to watch his uh, Philly run. Frankie Pennington gets them out. Yeah, and most recently just crushed the field by six and certainly deserved to be at least the second favorite in here. Good race here. Here's Chris Griffin with our local race of the week. Miss Michaela and Flash and Dynamite. They're one, two as they get set to move to the backstretch. Midnight Obsession is tucked in behind those rivals in third. Then comes Billy Ann with touch wide here around that first turn. Then comes Wildcat Cartridge, who's in fifth. Precious is under a tight hold in the sixth spot in the trailer. Like a pro, Flash and Dynamite. The veteran has got a neck in front. Miss Michaela is right to her outside. They're one, two. Midnight Obsession is being encouraged to move forward. Then comes Wildcat Cartridge at the rail. Following that move is Precious, losing ground was Billy Ann, and like a pro, has trailed throughout, is now 10 off the leader. It's Flash and Dynamite, who gets set to take him into that far turn. Flash and Dynamite is doing it well. 24 and 2 is that opening quarter mile, 48 seconds flat for a half mile time. Flash and Dynamite, now five, widening lengths in front. Wildcat Cartridge is driven along. Here's Midnight Obsession, right to the outside of Miss Michaela, who's dropping back through the field. Precious is rallying on, like a pro, Billy Ann at the back of the field. Another quick look back from Ruben Silvera. Flash and Dynamite hugs the rail, sees Midnight Obsession chasing, and Frankie Pennington and Midnight Obsession are coming after this leader now. Flash and Dynamite is still in front. Midnight Obsession is trying to cut into the margin. A final furlong left to go. Flash and Dynamite is opening up. Flash and Dynamite inside the final 16th is going to crush. It's all Flash and Dynamite. Ruben Silvera picks up another one, and she wins this one impressively. Flash and Dynamite and Ruben Silvera just demolish the field. <laughs> Midnight Obsession, a distant second, but big win there. First off the claim for trainer Jamie Ness. Yeah, it was big from first to second, big from second to third. It was just a two-horse race, really a one-horse race. Flash and Dynamite, uh, Jamie Ness gets the money in here. Gets the 35000 back as Michael Moore, as we suggested, claimed this horse right back. He knew how good the seven-year-old mare was, and he wants to get a little more out of her. Same ownership group came right back in on Flash and Dynamite. I suspected something was up when I saw the owners, and uh, Mike Moore dropped the slip really <laughs> early. Didn't want uh, to put anyone off there that yep. he was going back in for this really <laughs> nice mare. But... Really nice uh, seven-year-old who's you know still running at a very top level. Right, and the nest stable makes like thirty grand in a couple of weeks. Not yeah. a bad deal for them either. Not a good return on an investment. <laughs> well, a good local race of the week for us. Let's get to our first break. When we come back, superstars are on the track in various stakes races. Stick around. And it is charge it. 
If you want action and you want it now, you got to get the new Parks Racing mobile app. Wager and watch thoroughbred and harness racing from around the world. With the Parks Racing mobile app, it's easy to open and fund your account. Then, place your wagers and cheer on your horse as they thunder down the stretch. With the Parks Racing mobile app, you'll easily make withdrawal requests, view the previous day's replays and results. Plus, open any new account now and you'll be automatically enrolled in the Parks Rewards program. The more you wager, the more you earn. Get the new Parks Racing mobile app and get in on the action. Racehorses are pampered, treated with care, and loved. Nothing is more important than their health and their safety. We do right by them. And they do right by us. The hardworking folks who proudly earn our living. In Pennsylvania's horse racing and breeding industries. Horse racing is a lot of fun. But it's so much more. It provides tens of thousands of jobs. 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 And billions in economic impact each year. All across the Commonwealth. Horse racing in Pennsylvania, it's a winner. The PA Horse Breeders Association introduces the Pennsylvania Stallion Series. Four brand new races to be run at parks for PA sired, PA bred two year olds. There are two $100,000 contests on August 22nd, PA Day at the Races. September 24th, PA Derby Day has two more races, each with a $200,000 purse. The PA Stallion Series, yet another reason why Pennsylvania is the premier place to breed and race. For more, please visit pabred.com. Welcome back to Let's Go Racing. Well, we had a little fun here uh, <laughs> last week. Archer and Griner came out to parks for a wonderful day, and we got to honor Pat Doran, who's one of our lobbyists, and we really wanted to thank him for all his service with parks racing and, of course, our organization, the Pennsylvania Thoroughbred Horsemen's Association. Well, you got to talk to him a little bit. I did. I've known Pat for quite a while. Of course, he's part of Archer and Griner, along with El Presidente himself, Sal Debunda. Yeah, Pat's a good dude, loves the track, and has really helped the horsemen here and I did have a chance to catch up with him on the day he was honored here at Parks. Pat Doran just after the Doran Dash. Pat of course a longtime partner at Archer Griner and the counsel for the PTHA here. Pat first of all what was it like to have a race named in your honor? I was uh, totally shocked when we got here today. I knew we were having the, the, the fourth race for our summer associates but it was uh, it was pretty cool. One thing I probably never thought there would be a horse race named after me. And Pat how has your involvement started here with the PTHA and how long has it been going on? I've been working with the PTHA for over 20 years, uh, negotiating the live racing agreement, handling drug cases for, for owners and trainers, handling disputes with, uh, with horse sales. You know, I really got involved with Sal. I'm a partner of Sal's at the firm, and I just happened to be in the right place at the right time 20-some years ago, and it evolved into me doing all kinds of different things for, for the horsemen. And, and how interested have you gotten in the sport as you've gotten into being the, doing the job that you're doing with the horsemen? Very interested. I, you know, I grew up in the city. We had a postage size uh, lawn. I, I didn't probably see a horse until I was in high school other than at a zoo. Um, but it's been great. It's been great to learn about the sport and see the passion of all the people that are involved in it. That's something that I've really enjoyed getting to learn about and, and working with people that are, that are so deeply passionate about the sport. It's great. Oh, well, we really thank you, Pat. And a great day for Archer and Griner uh, Law Offices. They came, they got to come do some tours of the barn. They got to see where Smarty Jones resided in John <laughs> Services' barn, of course, Kate DeMassey's barn. We had some guest speakers. You, yep, well, I got to mingle, give out some picks, and talk about horse racing here at Parks. Danielle Montgomery, of course, talked about turning for home. And just an awesome day to share what we do and what we love with people that help us in various ways. Yeah, really well said, Danny. We all hung out in the cotillion room, and I've been to the center city the office of Archer Griner, and it was nice to have them all come out here to the track. Definitely. Well, let's get into some national races brought to you by the Chapman Auto Group. If there are emblems not on the back of your car or truck, well, you did pay too much. Let's go right to New York, New York, Belmont. It's the John Nehrude States, grade two, $250,000, seven furlongs, and the favorite is Life is Good, one to five post time. So Life is Good, last seen in the Dubai World Cup, getting tired at the end of the mile and a quarter, and Todd Pletcher said, just didn't think he liked that tiring track and he hit the wall late, but going a seven furlongs and he looks like he's loose on the lead. Okay. Yeah. And he gets a new rider, Flavian Pratt, and Speaker's Corner takes second choice, who also gets a new rider, Jose Ortiz for Bill Mott. So Speaker's Corner last seen just getting crushed by, by flight line after an incredible early run of the 2022 season. Bill Mott brought him back quickly to see if he could catch. See, maybe uncatchable. Life is good. Well, it looks like a two horse race on paper, but we will see. Here is the call of the stakes race. Life is good leads here by a head. 
Speaker's Corner, right there on the outside in second. Five lengths, back to Repa Rocks in third, the opening quarter mile in 22 seconds. It is Life is Good, the big favorite down at the rail, leading here by a half length. Speaker's Corner on the outside runs in second as they go around the far turn. Life is Good is the leader. Speaker's Corner running in second. A half dozen lengths now. Back to Repo Rocks in third. And farther back is Harvard. Life is Good maintaining the lead over Speaker's Corner after a sharp half in 44 and three-fifth seconds. Life is Good in front with a quarter of a mile to the finish. Speaker's Corner being asked for more on the outside. It is Life is Good with the lead in the stretch, and Life is Good is now opened up on Speaker's Corner. Life is Good has a three-length lead. Speaker's Corner in second. Repo Rocks is down at the rail in third. Life is Good returning to the races today. Last seen in the Dubai World Cup, comes back sprinting in the seven furlong John Nehrud and wins decisively. Well, it was a win for Life is Good <laughs> with Flavian Pratt. He looks really fun to ride. He kind of like travels with his head up a little bit, yep. but you could just tell him, go faster, buddy. So, yeah, Life is Good caught a flyer at the start, which he didn't really need, but he got anyway. He was out there. Look, I thought Speaker's Corner gave a huge effort he trying. Did. Boy, that, what a tough go, right? He runs really good two times in a row, runs behind flight line. Life is Good. 112 buyer for Life is Good. That's a career best for a horse who does 110s, 107s all the time. Whitney next, mile and eighth. The ultimate is try for the Breeders' Cup Classic. And Danny, we can only hope at Keeneland, and we're going to mention some other horses here in a minute, that we can get them all showing up in the starting gate the first Saturday of, of November in the Breeders' Cup Classic. Flight line, life is good, and we'll talk about some of the others in a minute. Definitely. And I heard Hot Rod Charlie is training for the Indeed Whitney as is. well. So uh, we'll be a good Whitney <laughs> stakes up there at Saratoga. Well, let's go to Churchill Downs under the Twin Spires. It was the grade two Stephen Foster, 750,000. Big purse there going a mile and an eighth. And our favorite is Olympiad for Bill Mott, who had Speaker's Corner in the other race. Junior Alvarado did make the trip out to ride him. Yeah, speaking of hot horses in 2022, Danny, this horse has won four in a row, all by open lengths. None of them are grade ones. This used to be a grade one. It's now a grade two, but Olympiad has been really, really impressive. Yeah, I think they have to get that grading change. And Mandaloon takes second choice at two to one for Brad Cox. Does get uh, regular jockey Florent Giroux. And if you look at his PPs, Giroux's been on him for all his starts. He was very disappointing in the Saudi Cup, and they just all right, they put a line through it. They think he's better. And I'm still having trouble saying this, Danny, but the 2021 Kentucky Derby winner is back at Churchill Downs. <laughs> he really is. All right. Well, here is the call of the Stephen Foster. Stakes. Cattle River from the inside post is going to save ground, cut the corner, and take the early lead. Olympiad is right there racing in second, and Mandaloon is not far behind. Three wide in third. Last Samurai spun out four wide fourth. American Revolution angles over toward the inside to track the pace from fifth to clear of title ready, and it's five lengths back to the trailer. Peroxy, the opening quarter in a sharp 23 seconds flat. Down the back stretch run, and Cattle River is the leader. Shadowed purposefully by Olympiad in second. And Mandaloon is right there to their outside in third. The three of them across the track through a spirited half in 46 and 2. The pace is sharp in this Foster indeed. Onto the far turn, Cattle River. Olympiad continues to stick right with him. And Mandaloon is their shadow too. The three of them round the far turn together. American Revolution is revving up from fourth and finding his best stride now. Now. Tide already is down toward the inside fifth, racing for the top of the stretch. Olympiad takes the lead right at the quarter pole and rolls off the turn in front by two. Cattle River gives way. Mandaloon gives way. American Revolution is a rallying second. Three lengths to make up and one for long to go. Olympiad still clear by two and a half. American Revolution trying to run him down. 100 yards to go. Olympiad with those powerful strides. And Olympiad with another win, and he simply makes his own luck, never gets in trouble, never has a bad trip. He's always in that really nice second spot. I thought this couldn't have been more impressive, Danny. I thought the pace was really fast. Cattle River was going. Olympiad prompted that pace, and American Revolution looks like he's going to make a run, runs away from Look, Olympiad's had a great year, great first half of the year. 111 buyer. Remember, I mentioned we're going to be over 110 three straight times. He'll also be in the Whitney's. And then we're talking life is good. 
Olympiad, Hot Rod Charlie. This is going to be the early uh, early season race of the year if they all show up at Saratoga. Oh, definitely going to be one to remember. Well, let's head back to New York and talk about the Grade Three Dwyer Stakes. This is for three-year-olds going one mile, two hundred and fifty thousand dollars. Our favorite is Charge It, who we haven't seen since the Kentucky Derby. Three to five, Top Pletcher Johnny Velasquez rides. So uh, it's interesting, Danny. I was in a contest on Florida Derby Day, and I had an exacta in the Florida Derby of White barrio over simplification and got split by charging and I told all my partners I said man this must be a really really good horse because he had a tough trip still ran second I put a line through his derby Todd does this every year he brings all these horses to the derby they just I don't he rushes them in there Todd is great at everything except the Kentucky Derby where he's <laughs> two for 60 so I I just put a line through that this is a very talented horse. I liked him since I saw him in Florida. Nabukov, I don't like that's a hard name to say for <laughs> trainer Chad Brown. Flavian Pratt's our second choice. Coming off a maiden win? Yeah, coming off a maiden win, 91. When Chad take, goes from a maiden to a graded stakes, he's telling you, I think this is a really good horse. So, And Chad has been he's setting the Belmont Park record for uh, the spring meet for most wins. Well, Chad is no stranger to good three-year-olds. Here is the call of the grade three Dwyer. The leader is fluid situation by a half length Charted is at the rail, and Nabokov's on the outside. The quarter went in 22 and two-fifth seconds. Fluid situation. Leads here by a full length. Charted runs in second, looking to get off the rail there. It is fluid situation, the leader. Charge it in second. Nabokov, no sabe nada, and running son of a gun. Those three are all together as the field goes around the far turn. It is fluid situation leading by a head. Charge it on his outside now. And then a break of two and a half lengths. Back to a no sabe and nada and running son of a gun. Nabokov has dropped 10 lengths from the front. And now the front runner is Charge It. Charge It has taken over the lead from fluid situation. The half in 44 and four. And now there's a quarter of a mile to the finish. And it is Charge It in control as they head for home. Three quarters, 109 and three. Charge It with the lead in the stretch here. And the lead has grown. Charge it is pouring it on. He's got a 10 length lead. He's going to win by more. Charge it returns to the races in an eye popping performance, winning the grade three Dwyer by the length of the stretch. Charge it. What I don't like to do because I like to pay cash, but huge, <laughs> huge win margin here. Son of Tappet, uh, I'll take charge. I mean, great breeding. This was awesome, Danny. I mean, this horse wins by what? 22 lengths. I mean, it was insane. It was just like, and a 111 buyer for charge at making 23 lengths. What a weekend Todd Pletcher had in New York. How about four stakes, five stakes overall, including one at Monmouth, had eight wins in New York, 10 overall. Todd, charge it. Life is good. Unfortunately, his Belmont Stakes winner, Mo Donegal, out for the year, but it's nice when you can have a sub like Charge It. He'll be pointing for the trackers. Yeah, definitely bummed about Mo Donegal. He's out with a bone bruise, but that's something that would just with time and rest. Yeah, he'll be he out. will be just fine, and I'm sure they're taking all the precautions with him. He'll get a nice little grassy <laughs> vacation, but Charge It was super impressive. Man, well, was it's, he ever. <laughs> yeah. Well, we're going to go to another break. When we come back, some race recap for you and a Jockey and Trainer of the Week. We'll see you in a minute. Turning for Home is a nonprofit that has provided nearly 2,800 former racehorses with a safe retirement. The program was created through the foresight of the Pennsylvania Thoroughbred Horsemen's Association. We all love animals, and to give back to something that helps us so much, it's, it's, a, it's a great thing. Responding to the need for a better system that addressed the uncertain future for the retiring equine population at Parks Racing, the PTHA rallied horsemen to support the program. These horses can do anything from hunter jump to Western to therapeutic riding. Turning for Home became the first on-track retirement program at our year-round racetrack. We want to make sure that our horses that have run so well for us over the years get the great opportunity to get a new vocation. Out of everything that we've done in Pennsylvania for racing, I think that's the thing we can be most proud of. If you would like to help these amazing animals find a great second career and forever home, please give us a call or contact us at turningforhome.org.
Welcome back to Let's Go Racing. Our jockey and trainer of the week is brought to you by Turning for Home, our resource retirement program that program here that we're so proud of, uh, continuously taking horses every day and retiring them for their next career. Well, that leads us to our jockey of the week. Congratulations, Ruben Silvera. Mm -hmm. He celebrated uh, his 100th win of the year, and he's already passed that since we filmed this. Right, so midway through, he's on pace to get 200 and win the jockey's title again. Yeah, he really is, and one hard worker, and he never gets rattled. One thing I really like about Ruben. Trainer of the week, we got to give a shout out to Mike Pino. He's just had a lot of wins sprinkled in each card, and he's being really aggressive with his horses, dropping them in the good spots, and he's getting rewarded for and it. And Mike has been really good for a really long time. Yeah, he's got some really good claims. I was talking to him about <laughs> some very successful nice. claims he's had. Yep. Well, let's head to race recap at Gulfstream Park. It's the grade two Princess Roonies for our Phillies and Mares going seven furlongs, $300,000. And uh, keep an eye on Make Mischief, who kind of takes the lead here. Does take the lead, but this race is all about the five, the defending champ, the Breeders' Cup Philly and Mare Sprint winner, CC for Danny's favorite trainer, Michael <laughs> McCarthy. The perfect trip with her, her boy, Victor Espinosa, and she just romps here. She's gonna win this thing by six and a half lengths. She's now 10 for 20 lifetime, over two million in earnings. She's some racehorse and she'll try to defend her title at Keeneland in the fall. But she just keeps somehow getting better. CC back to the winner's circle. Yeah, and she loves that seven furlongs, and it looked like yep. Victor just hand rode her. Yep. She was just waiting to, for him to say, when do we go, Victor? <laughs> so impressive. Couldn't be more happy for my girl CC. Well, let's go back to Churchill Downs because they had a lot going on. It's the American Derby. This is for three-year-olds, $200,000, a mile and a 16th. Really cool name for a race. And uh, Keep an eye on uh, Rattle and Roll, our friend. He's following Coocher around the turn. Right, he's the nine. He's Kenny McPeak. This is the son of PA Derby winner Connect, who actually beat two, uh, the Derby winner and, and the Preakness winner that year, and Gunrunner. They were all behind Connect. The son of Connect, Rattle and Roll, is going to roll right on by here. Win by two lengths at the end, get a 91 buyer. Uh, maybe the Haskell next you would think would be a likely possibility, but boy, that's going to be a tough heat. Cyberknife will be in there, and a Chris Jack Christopher will be a heavy favorite in the Haskell, but our man Kenny McPeak, one of Danny's other favorites after we got to hang out with Kenny Derby Week. Kenny's the coolest, and right on roll, just rolled on by with Brian Hernandez. Really nice win for this three-year-old. Great to see him back in good form. And it was at Delaware Park. They had a big day last weekend. It's the grade three Delaware Oaks for Phillies and Mares going a mile and 16, $300,000 pot there. Looks like a two-horse race here at the end with Midnight Stroll and Shotgun Hottie. Yeah, now they hooked up in the lane, and boy, Shotgun Hottie, the three, really looks like she is going to go by another daughter of the hot sire, speaking of gun runner. But Midnight Stroll just holds on, a daughter of not this time, and other sires having a great, great year. Uh, morning matcha for Butch Reed and the LC and, and Cassius King guys. Distant third, it came running, but just, just wasn't good enough at every chance. But yeah, Midnight Stroll, John Terranova, and Eric Consell, who had a huge day at Delaware Park. Oh, he certainly did. And Matcha needs to switch her lead so she can get that extra punch, <laughs> but uh, big win there for Midnight Stroll and Eric Consell. Well, it's time for Ion Racing, and lots of gambling fun today, <laughs> because let's just start with it. First of all, we're racing here at Parks, 1255 post. Uh, big day at Belmont Park. They have the two great ones on the turf, the Belmont Derby and the Belmont Oaks. Yeah, always cool. You often see some horses coming from overseas for these two. Yeah, and Delaware has a big day. The Delaware Handicap, grade two, that's a huge purse. They also have four stakes as well. Right, a mile and a quarter for older fillies and mares, one of the great stakes races on the East Coast. Yeah, we year. saw Songbird win that. Yes, we did. We had seen. <laughs> and uh, those other three-year-old smaller derbies we talk about on the yep, show sometimes, sure. the Ohio Derby, or the yeah. Iowa Derby, yep. and the Indiana Derby. Yeah, our, our girl Trish Bowman will get to oversee the uh, Indiana Derby in her first year as the state steward at it used to be Indiana Downs, and now it's Horseshoe Indianapolis. Yeah. Like, why would, oh, it's associated with the casino. Yeah. <laughs> Everything's associated with the casino. Of well, huge gambling day. Hopefully, you can come out and hang out with me here at Parks and bet on some of these cool races. Well, we're going to head to another break. When we come back, news and notes. See you on the other side of this break. 
If you want action and you want it now, you got to get the new Parks Racing mobile app. Wager and watch thoroughbred and harness racing from around the world. With the Parks Racing mobile app, it's easy to open and fund your account. Then, place your wagers and cheer on your horse as they thunder down the stretch. With the Parks Racing mobile app, you'll easily make withdrawal requests, view the previous day's replays and results. Plus, open any new account now and you'll be automatically enrolled in the Parks Rewards program. The more you wager, the more you earn. Get the new Parks Racing mobile app and get in on the action. The Pennsylvania Thoroughbred Horsemen's Association is the advocate for Parks Racing's horsemen and has worked hard to secure better lives for the hundreds of trainers and their families that work in the thoroughbred racing industry. Our horsemen benefit from medical coverage, trainer pension plans, and increased purses. Thanks to these horsemen, racing at parks is the very best, providing entertainment for you and the entire family. The Pennsylvania horsemen are proud to be part of the community and introduce a new generation of fans to the sport of kings. Did you know absolutely no taxpayer dollars support the Pennsylvania horse racing industry? In fact, racing generates $1.6 billion that pays taxes, creates jobs and more, right here in Pennsylvania. Let's go racing. Welcome back. News and notes brought to you by our Granny Fund, which uh, helps continue an education for our backstroke community. Lots to talk about today. First of all, we're racing today, so I'll be back up on Sirius Radio at 11 a.m. Channel 85, and I'm going to talk about parks today. Of course you are, and you'll give out some winners, Danny. I know you will. And Roger Atfield had his 2,000th win, but it came in a dead heat. Here is the call of the Nassau Stakes. Lady Spite Spear dreaming of Drew and our flash drive. They come clear. Two lengths to Crystal Cliffs running on well. Plum Ali in the centre. Out in front, our flash drive takes over and got away. Now Crystal Cliffs running on. Lady Spite Spear hard at it. Crystal Cliffs after our flash drive. Our flash drive. Lady Spite Spear fighting back. And Crystal Cliffs, it's not over yet for Lady Spite Spear. And is fighting up on the inside. Our flash drive. Crystal Cliffs. Lady Spite Spear's in front. Crystal Cliffs on the outside. It's Lady Spite Spear on the rail. It's a photo. Lady Spite Spear and Crystal Cliffs in a head bob in the Lady Spite Spear got the win for him in a really exciting fashion there. Yeah, look, Roger's one of the great trainers in North American history. Obviously, he's a legend up in Canada. Well, it wasn't our 2000th win, but me and my mom had a big <laughs> win here last week at Parks with our horse Clemenza. Take the cannoli, leave the gun. <laughs> he did it and uh, couldn't be happier. Me and my mom, it's our dream that we do together. Clemenza, so proud of him and uh, more carrots coming your way, buddy. <laughs> Something that me and my mom get to do together. That's just our dream for sure. And more stakes races here. Uh, Tuesday, July 12th, we have the Dr. James Petty Memorial on the turf. We usually get decent field here. For yeah, that. Princess Grace last year, always a good race and we look forward to it. Definitely, and some sad news to report, legendary Hank Goldberg uh, passed away. Right, Hank passed away at 82 on July 4th, Danny, that was his birthday, and I knew Hank through obviously the racetrack, did some uh, ESPN pre-Breeders' Cup shows with him and Kenny Mayne and Jay Pridman. People know him mostly for his work on ESPN uh, football. I mean, he was on there every Sunday giving out picks. And in South Florida, he was an absolute legend where he lived. He had a talk show. Everybody knew him. He was basically the king down there. So big <laughs> that when I wanted to go to Joe's Stone Crabs with a couple of my family members back before the 2006 Orange Bowl, I walked in and said, well, how long is the wait? They said, three hours. I said, what if I know Hank Goldberg? Stand over there. You'll be in in two minutes. That's how big Hank was. Great guy. We'll be very much missed by everybody who knew him. Love the racetrack, and I do mean love the racetrack. Oh, well, definitely a legend that will leave a great legacy behind for his friends and family. Well, that wraps it up for us, but come hang out with us today, 1255. We're back Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. Of course, catch that steak race on Tuesday. Thanks for joining Dick and I. We will see you next week on Let's Go Racing. And they're off. Speaker's Corner has early speed. Hot Rod Charlie, Midnight Bourbon, American Revolution. American Revolution, a 16th to go. Hot Rod Charlie is opening up. Hot Rod Charlie will win the pencil.